to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Jason Moore, Mike Wright, Andy Holloway, the Fantasy Footballers Podcast, Tuesday, October 22nd. Welcome back to the show. Thank you for listening, following, supporting this podcast. It was uh, it was a night of football. I believe that the last time that I've heard Mike Wright's words was 8:42 <laughs> p.m. And was that right after the last offensive play of the weekend? Yes. Yeah. Cuz that's when I lost. And there's the first time I've heard his words <laughs> since then. He just got into That's the, when I lost. Got the, into last the, the last studio offensive play. Of, yeah, of the I weekend. didn't lose on the kick. I'm like, I'm sure there's plenty of people who out there they lost on the the Cardinals field goal, but no, I lost by point two on that final James Conner run. And that was his final words. Yeah. Um, and we haven't heard from him since. In fact, I was 50-50 that I'd see him this morning. No, I'm uh, I'm always here. I'm always here. I will say this. I I, I am a full changed man um, with regards to the double Monday night football. Because rewind the tape, beginning of the season, I, I was not a fan. You know, it was like we – let us have our island game, you know, where everything right. can focus on one. And I, you know, I, I think I would still be exactly there for Thursday night football. You know, it's like, let's just watch the one game and we're all in, you know, in it together. But the fact that Monday's the end of the fantasy football week, having more players that met, like across all my leagues, all of our leagues, there were so many teams and so many players. It was like, it was it was – the drama was exceptionally high. It was high. very high, yes. It also is a hedge against a bad game. Yeah, So if you have, had. <laughs> if you have one that wasn't very entertaining or exciting towards the end, it, it, it allows you to – and I, I was just doing both on the same TV and going back and forth to the, to the sound, and I'm enjoying that experience. Uh, Mike and I had our, our head-to-head battle. It was not looking good for me. Mark Andrews. Hello, two touchdowns. I I thought I would lose to two Andrews and two Javante this week, which just feels like I was excited to play against both of those players and they were dominant. Yeah, the but the 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 universe was really trying to be to be like, hey, Mister, the most anti Mark Andrews guy, eat it, and then uh, then the the. The Chargers forgot how to play defense. The Mark Andrews narrative and story has gone. It's just been so wild. Like we had the beginning of the season. The analysis after the beginning of the season was that Mark Andrews looks the same and is fine. Mm -hmm. And week two was fine. And then the amount of games with the limited opportunities meant that the gap we have to 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 make up between you know the involvement of the offense and productivity for your fantasy team was wide. Jason went on record two weeks ago and said, don't give up. He scored twice. I mean, 43 yards, but this is Mark Andrews, really. I mean, you his red zone involvement has been his story minus one year where he was highly targeted. Otherwise, he's always been kind of a go-to red zone option. He scored twice last night. Um, and he scored once the week prior. So this is, uh, to Andy's point, he is a really good red zone option. But, but I do want to make sure, we're, like, I – when we watch the film, Mark Andrews is good as as he's been. He's a, just annihilating people as a blocker. He's getting open in space. Um, everything's good. However, his entire career of substance for fantasy football, he's been an 80% route participation type of guy. Now he's down to a 60% and was in this game as well. Four targets last week, four targets this week. Great fantasy games because three touchdowns. Obviously, he is better than a lot of the waiver wire tight ends. Despite the back-to-back -back gooses, he's not that guy. He's a very good player. But I don't believe – you know, the truth is in between. Where it's yeah, like he's I agree. Not, he's not the goose, and he's not this, oh, he's back baby where, 
he's going to be leading in targets and in yards every single game for the Ravens. Um, he is a talented player on a great offense who can put up points but is not the center focal point of the offense anymore. Yeah, that would be King Henry. Just to finish the story because I don't want to leave people hanging, I uh, Kyler and Connor ended up overcoming J.K. Dobbins' disappearing act against the Cardinals, and uh, I ended up beating Mike in the end, which, you know, last year we had the matchup, me and Josh, and this one ended very similarly except for one fundamental difference, which is Mike has a lot of class. Oh, well, that's mm, a you know what I mean? Thank you. And so, um, but Much I mean, far more. I mean, comparing one's character against Josh, not a. It's. I mean, it's not a bar. You don't even have to have to step over that thing. That thing is in the basement. You can just keep walking, and you will clear the bar. If you got ice skates on, yeah. just stay on the ground and yeah, move, you just, move across. Just it. slide right over it. So. For sure, Jackson's I, I appreciate today. the compliment, but it's also yeah. It's but you much. look like you look so righteous. You know what I mean? Like uh, it's incredible your your moral character. Well, I didn't get by any, comparison. I didn't get any like uh, paraphernalia left on my you know personal <laughs> property like I did from Papa Josh last year. But no, it was. Uh, we'll get into the full recap there. I just uh, you know it was two high scoring affairs. I mean we. Yeah. We have a lot to talk about. I feel like we could talk about the recaps of those games, but to your point about Andrews, this is you know this is Henry and Lamar. I mean that that's this team right now. Five hundred rushing yards, um, dismantling their opposition on the ground. And you really, if Lamar plays at this level, he is not stoppable as an NFL player. You can't, like they say, pick your poison, right? But like all poison kills, yeah, right. Poison, yeah. So it's like, yep. Pick which way you die is the expression. But yeah. like, what if I don't want to die? Yeah, then like, don't what if I play don't the pick Ravens. Poison, the, right? The Bucks were feeling pretty good when it was ten to zero, and they were dominating on both sides yes, of the ball. They, they were. They looked great. I will say that the offense for the Buccaneers, and and you know, if we're in this game, yes, um, the offense took a major, major turn the second that Mike Evans hurt, re-hurt, and then re-re-hurt his hamstring. So he got the touchdown early, hurt his hamstring on that play, kept playing. Had a second option uh, opportunity for a touchdown in the end zone, dropped the ball because his hamstring was uh, ripped to shreds, it, so it seemed, by his reaction. But once he was no longer in the game, I mean, it really took a toll on that offense. And then, of course, late in the game. And when I say late, I mean garbage time, unimportant. This is why you don't – well – Whatever you want to say. Maybe it was a garbage time, but very, very, yes. very late in the game. A very devastating injury to Chris Godwin, the ankle. My first reaction was that this was the worst coached game in history from the perspective of getting your players hurt. That was my original reaction because it was clear, regardless of Mike Evans scoring the first touchdown, that he was not remotely correct ready to play in this football game. He you know, I know he wants to contribute big matchup Monday night football. I'm not blaming Mike Evans for wanting to play. Sometimes you have to protect players from themselves, but he was not ready to play. And that's a coaching training staff decision. And then at the end of the game controversy, because 43 seconds left or whatever it was, Chris Godwin dislocates, breaks his ankle, feel terrible for the guy going into free agency, been playing great football. Yeah. So both fundamental pieces of the offense are now down. My original reaction was, how is he in the football game? But I also had thought that they had the two onside kick limit because that was a proposal by the NFL when the new onside kick rules went through. And that, so in my opinion, I thought, okay, you're going down to just lose by less because you can't onside kick and the Ravens can just knee it out down 10. They could have onside kick. They had gotten an onside kick. They could have. If they score, I mean, they, the Browns won a ball game this year in the identical situation. So I am no longer holding that against Todd Bowles. It's unfortunate what happens. I'm sure those players didn't want to leave the field when you have an opportunity, however minuscule it was, to come back and win, and they had been moving the ball down the field. But now you lose two major components. The trickle-down effect of these injuries is massive on fantasy football. I mean, I think we'd all admit that Mike Evans, if he misses just three weeks, I'd be shocked. 
I if mean, it's if it's only three. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I feel like his history of hamstring injuries and the severity and pain he was in, maybe that – I mean, this is just speculation at this point, but he's got to miss at least a week. Well, so. you, you see oftentimes that re-injuring a hamstring is worse than the original hamstring injury, and while the original hamstring injury obviously wasn't enough to keep him out of the game, he – you know, li like, I, like I said, he was on the sideline after the first touchdown – really dealing with the hamstring limping like crazy and the fact that he went back out and then really um yeah we've seen nico go on ir we, we've seen a handful of players go on ir for a, ha a handful uh, oh, no. you know what i mean switch uh but yeah I, I i expect him to miss a lot of time and and we mentioned briefly ankle injury for chris Godwin, but it was one of those like you don't watch injuries. He's done for the season. It's pointed the other direction. Right. So, this might have been the the swan song for Baker in fantasy football because – Oh, my laser. Uh, 370 and three, two picks. I feel like it was a little bit my fault because the moment I said Baker is so good in our chat, he threw a nasty interception. Two of his next – three pass attempts, Andy, after you said that, were interceptions. So, you know, filling in the gap for Evans was Kate Otten, eight for 100. It was also Rashad White. And, you know, a lot of people, today's a waiver show. We're going to run to the waiver wire for Jalen McMillan and Kate Otten. Uh, I think Rashad White might be the biggest benefactor of these injuries because Jalen McMillan's a rookie. You don't know the trust level, Sterling Shepard, other players, Kate Otten, there have been times when this offense did not have Godwin and Evans, and I think Otten is a beneficiary. I'm not saying he's not, but I just wonder if Rashad White will get lost somewhere. He was 6 for 71, two touchdowns, caught passes, and we know what this offense was like when Godwin wasn't a focal point, which was Rashad White. Do you guys agree with that? Richard uh, White might have an opportunity? Uh, the opportunities are going to – they will go up. The yeah, it's, it's so difficult because the game – like this was a this was a wild game of after the first half the the at least the carry count I believe it was I had uh I had tweeted it out of uh, someone it was I think it was from Yankee but he's like all three running backs have five carries or five touches I can't remember which one it is at halftime it's like that is disgusting and then they were down so much so fast and which maybe that's the prescription now of like the, because the offense won't be able to move very much uh so I, it's definitely a bump for Rashad White the the Jalen McMillan ad I mean like obviously if you're getting White you have to trade for him where McMillan could be on your waiver wire it's does he go to Chris Godwin's role like the, he was a slot player in college does he go to the slot for Tampa Bay now or does somebody else do that and that's a, I mean, that's this is the Cooper Cup role of an offense where it just the the it's designed very specifically to get that player involved. So that's where the addition of McMillan is is so exciting. Of if he actually gets that slot role, it's it's really big upside. Yeah, and you also have Sterling Shepard there, who we saw fill in a little bit. He's a veteran guy who can uh, he can play both inside and in the slot. So, uh, but he'll be. Free, I think. I don't think people are rushing after Sterling Shepard on waivers. So, uh, and then in the other game, the Cardinals beat the Chargers. Uh, final score of the previous one, 41-31 Ravens. Cardinals beat the Chargers 17-15. James Conner, 19 for 101 on the ground. Also two for 51 through the air. Didn't get into the end zone, but that was good enough for 17 plus fantasy points and half point and more in full. Kyler, 6 for 64 on the ground, only threw for 145 yards passing. I think most people's reaction to this game will be great joy with James Conner and great despair with Marvin Harrison Jr., Dude, who was 3 for what 21. What is going on? 3 for 21 and also dropped a pass that was down the field. That was the one he ended up getting a, a penalty on, but it was kind of egregious. It's, I mean, went through his arms, hit him in the belly, it, they're not on the same page. No. There's also a problem, I think, with play development. There's not a lot of plays being drawn up for Harrison that happen quick, and the Cardinals' offensive line and Kyler's needing to 
escape the pocket has led to, you know, pl- all these plays. We keep getting replays of Marvin Harrison being open late in the play, but Kyler's running all over the place at this point. Yes. So they're kind of irrelevant. And, you know, we got the big game against the Rams, but most of these plays, there's no, you know, where's the quick slant, right? Where Like he's in, he's in the slot, but where's the quick slant in one-on-one coverage? Where's the out route five yards from the line of scrimmage as opposed to showing us highlights of double moves where Kyler had no chance to throw him the football? The Cardinals have scored 17 or fewer points in four of their games. Like, I don't – I have no idea what they're doing in these offensive meetings. We're like, yeah, no, the, things are working really, really well right now, guys. And and the last uh, – what was the the big Kyler run? I mean, he had one this week. Was it also two weeks ago yep. or was that San Francisco? It was San Francisco. So, I mean, that's two like plays that you can't count on those of all the time. I mean, th- this, this one especially of – Kyler it was it was a masterful play of he watched the defense completely shift all over to the right and then he just ran completely open all the way to the end zone but it's it's maddening to see how ineffective this offense is and feel like nothing is changing they just keep going to it saying maybe it will work this time what's really weird about this game is that the Cardinals were running the ball outstandingly couldn't throw the ball which is you would you would think with Kyler like and Marvin Harrison it would be the opposite and on the and, other and with the Chargers defense being so formidable exactly and then on the other side the Chargers you would expect to be running the ball so well against yes. the Cardinals and not throwing the ball much because their their wide receivers are injured and instead they can't run the ball for anything but here's Justin Herbert with 350 yards uh, Dob- uh, it was no a weird touchdowns. game yeah no the touchdowns. Dobbins line was awful 14 for 40 that included a long of 11. Like it was, I, it was. The Cardinals looked like run on them Cardinals <laughs> looked like they had an extra man in the box in every play, yeah. and they wanted to go. Te- I mean, look, the leading receiver for oh baby for the Chargers, Big Montana, Will yeah. Disley. Woohoo! Eleven targets, eight receptions, eighty-one yards. He big, he fast, he strong. He Will Disley, Big Montana. <laughs> yeah, you're back, baby. Never die, Will. <laughs> I can't believe but in he the looks, year of 2024 we're honest. talking about Will Disley. He looks enormous. I mean, he looks like an offensive tackle in the passing game. So the Cardinals said, hey, beat us with the passing game. And these these players, they couldn't get into the end zone. Cardinals end up winning the ball game. You're right, it's frustrating. Let's talk fantasy, though. Through uh, now seven weeks, Trey McBride has been disappointing. Can't get into the end zone. Marvin Harrison disappointing. And... You know, really the only impressive player on the totality of the season, the only player you're happy with the draft capital invested in has been James Conner because Kyler you haven't been. No. And Harrison and McBride you haven't been. So moving forward, you know, the Cardinals get Miami in Miami next week. Miami, uh, I believe, if you look at the Stream Finder tool in our on our website, is number one against opposing quarterbacks. They are top tier against quarterbacks. Part of that without Tua has been the fact that teams have been in the lead and that Miami is never playing with the lead, so you run on them. Um, I, I It's hard for me to look at any metrics against the Dolphins, offense or defense, without Tua and like put a lot of stock into it, but it will be interesting going forward to see how that plays out. I think that you're worried about the passing game, but there are there's still the chance as the season progresses that the passing game figures it out. The weapons are there with McBride, with Harrison, um, and Kyler. That You still want them to figure it out. You could see a path where they do, but right now it's not working. little disappointing, and I don't know how hurt he was, but Ladd McConkey just 46 of those 350 passing yards. All in the second half. The first half couldn't connect, and he did look injured. Yeah, it was it was just a strange game. Cardinals won, you know all the all this negativity. Cardinals won the ball game mostly because the defense and the running game. James Conner though has been a revelation, and they zero snaps for Benson in this game. Only one carry for Demarcado. You're always looking at that, and if that's a trend for Arizona to continue to give James Conner, you know that kind of a workload, because that wasn't always common down the stretch last year, despite him playing well. But um, that was good to see. Any other thoughts on this ball game? I know we had a lot to recap from those. This is a waiver show. Um, so we're going to talk about players yeah. to pick up and, you know, injuries. Uh, we saw more of them last night. So you need to make changes on the team and the roster and add depth and do all of those things. And we're going to try to give you the players that we're looking for on today's show. Um, 
We're going to take a quick break and we'll come back with a new segment. All right. Um, one of the things that happened last year, if you were listening to the show, is that we had some pretty important mid-season transactions. David Njoku, Dak Prescott, CeeDee Lamb. There were players that at about this juncture in the year, you could start to foresee the future in terms of we know a lot about opposing defenses. We know the way teams are trending. And you were able to add some players that were league winners. And then inversely, you had players in the beginning of last year, Kenneth Walker, Travis Etienne, that were such difference makers at that juncture of the season but didn't finish that way. Connor was another great end of season, Najee Harris. So from this point on in the season, we've got a new segment we want to break down, players that you can look at as maybe the beginning part of winning a championship. Welcome to Difference Makers, presented by Imes Pet Food. <laughs> uh, that was a surprise. I thought it was done, and then it was back. Uh, so th there's not going to be a rule set on this segment. It's not going to be like we each have one name every week or two names every week. We're just going to bring up some names that we think will be opportunities to potentially get ahead of the curve, ahead of your league mates. Um, not exactly a waiver segment, not exactly a trade for a segment, but a difference maker segment. We want to point out some players that we think could be difference makers down the stretch. Um, I'm going to kind of flip the order of the guys we talk about. Sure. Is that all right? Yeah. Because uh, one of the bigger storylines this weekend was, you know, Brandon Ayuk is part of the news. He, he tore his ACL. He's done for the year. We got news yesterday that Debo Samuel is dealing with pneumonia. Hospitalized. He's hospitalized pneumonia. with pneumonia. We've got the return of Ricky Pearsall, but from a difference-making perspective, we've already seen it at the beginning of this year. I want to bring up Juwan Jennings' name. Juwan Jennings is right now the wide receiver 19 on the year because he's already taken advantage of opportunities. He put up that 44-point week three when he had an opportunity. What I've noticed when watching the film frequently of the 49ers is that when he's on the field with Brock Purdy, they have a pretty great connection. The passer rating for Brock Purdy is exceptional specifically with Juwan Jennings, and the things that Shanahan, Kyle Shanahan has come out and said about Juwan Jennings have been very promising from his developmental standpoint. So I want to bring that name up. Now, he didn't play this past week. He's dealing with a hip injury. Mm -hmm. Kyle Shanahan has come out and said he's not positive. He'll be back this week. But, you know, Juwan Jennings is on a lot of waiver wires or at the bottom of people's benches. And with this opportunity in this offense – Juwan Jennings could have a crucial role on a good offense the rest of the season. Yeah, he's he's the clear beneficiary as far as playing time and opportunities and the the target pecking order when it comes to the Brandon Ayuk uh, injury. You've seen some success this year. You've seen a good rapport with Brock Purdy. So Juwan Jennings is someone who could go from almost irrelevance to an actual difference maker. But I I he's don't. Also, sorry, I just want to throw this in there before you move forward. He's tied with Kittle for the highest targets per route run on the football team. So when he's on the field, there is that connection that we've yeah, seen Brock between him and Kittle. Something he sees, yeah, and, and for for just cause because it's it's worked out when targeting Juwan Jennings. But I, you know, I don't know if Debo plays this week with the pneumonia issue that that really hampered him this last week and obviously hospitalized him. But I want to bring his name up since this is a difference maker segment. Um, there's two names to me that when when I look forward at some changes going on in the league or their teams um, that I, I think are true difference makers, Debo could be top 10 wide receiver the rest of the season. We've seen when Brandon Ayuk is off the field, here's some stats. Uh, Jacob Gibbs tw tweeted this out, great follow on Twitter. Um, the target per route run and the yards per route run rate, if you look at their stars, you look at Debo and Kittle, when Brandon Ayuk is off the field, the target per route run rate, Debo's at 37% versus Kittle's 24%. And yards per route run, Debo's up at 4.44. That's an outrageous number. Um, and Kittle's at, at 2, which is which is still good. Um, so when, when Ayuk has been off the field, Debo has been so necessary to the offense. He's a great player. When he recovers from pneumonia, I think he could be one of those, like, league winning type and quality of, of fantasy assets. And we're still waiting for CMC to return. 
Yeah, Debo. Debo's a good name. So the, the tandem there in San Francisco, potential difference makers, as we know this offense and this team will be in the mix throughout this season. I'll also highlight the upcoming schedule for San Francisco yep. wide receivers. You're facing bottom, you know, 10 defenses against opposing fantasy wideouts for the next three matchups. So something to pay attention to. Now, Mike, you threw another name in there. This one I think is worthy of more discussion because I think I – I don't know. I, I'm just down on this guy right now. I get that, and it's maybe that is exactly why you're bringing his name up. And I've I've already brought him up a couple times. Of, but I was bringing up Jalen Warren in the in the the breath of, I think you should like I, I think you should go get him. He might be on some waivers. I, and his his value is about as low as it can possibly get because he's been hurt for the entirety of the year. Like he got hurt uh, before the season with a with a hamstring, was really, really limited for those first three weeks, and then he missed a couple games with a knee injury. Uh, yeah, so on sleeper, he's uh, Jalen's 42% rostered. So he is like he's a guy you could just aggressively go get with a priority or with fab, and it's looking at what uh, like what's coming up here for Jalen Warren. The Because the split, Najee's been great the last two weeks, but the split is back. Like Jalen Warren was was back up to fifty one percent of the snaps. He had fifteen opportunities. Uh, so the like, what has been happening with Najee? I think that that's going to to come back down, and it's looking at okay if Russ is really the quarterback of this team, which he is. Russ is the quarterback now. Russell Wilson, last year at least, was a check down machine. He was in the Sean Payton offense, but you had that. And last year, Jalen Warren, 61 receptions, fifth most at the running back position. This is a guy that I, I think you can get off the waiver wire. And as long as – this is not a standard play. This is a half – more preferably a PPR type of a play. But he's someone who can go right into your flex and then can be a bye week running back for you Of that can change like the composition of your roster. To get to get that type of a, of a running back, that you know I can play each and every week. It's not going to be great every week, but there's going to be times where he's going to hit. Uh, I, I think that he should be a priority at. Him and Jawan are my top uh, go-to guys for off of the waiver wire this week. Yeah, now before we move on, I did want to throw out one more name that has just been on, uh, my, on my heart. I, you know what? Do you know where I'm going? Of course I do. You do? Because, yes, because I can feel the... You can feel the excitement? I does, can feel does, the, does this player need to be in difference makers, Jason? This is a true difference maker. Yeah, I think you're talking about a, a, a league... Maybe I don't know where you're going. Yeah. I, I'm talking about a league winner. Oh, no, I'm not going Troy Franklin. Okay, oh, yeah, that's, no, what? that's all I can think of. That's in the waiver segment. It's coming. <laughs> oh, don't gosh. you worry. No, no, no. This is a true difference maker. I think a league winner. Okay. Um, This is this is one of my my guys. It's Devon Achan. Devon Achan, sure. I know I know over the last month, Andy, you and I have had had back and forth discussions as to whether or not what you've seen is is disheartening and like maybe you don't believe. There are managers that just flat don't believe now. You know, even though Tua has been gone, they're just like, I don't I don't know if he's that guy. W you know, Tua played a game and a half and and Devon Achan was the running back uh, three uh, over the first Seven two and weeks. Three, yeah. Yeah, I mean, he was he was averaging 22.8 fantasy points a game. Over the next 5 weeks, the number 1 strength of schedule for running backs in the league is the Miami Dolphins. So if you can find a manager who doesn't believe in Devon Achan or maybe you can, you know, do something, I would personally, I think that the matchup which is not a waiver pickup, it's a difference maker it, you could go trade yeah, for on the low. Exactly right. I think our only difference of opinion on him was the kind of I felt like you were conceding that he's not an inside runner and I don't believe that about oh. him. I actually think I think he is that and they have to give him those opportunities. He is an inside runner against non-stacked so, boxes. So wait, were, were you trying <laughs> to say that so the next 5 weeks they have the best schedule? Correct. The next so then is Raheem Mostert in the mix? Sure. Yeah. I mean, I I think the Dolphins offense should get better. Their running game should be great, but specifically, I mean, there's a with how high the ceiling is. Exactly. Look exactly. at us. Exactly. Look at us. All right, that was Difference Makers presented by Imes Pet Food. When you choose Imes, you see the difference in your pet with your own eyes. Healthy energy in five days, healthy digestion, digestion in 10 days, and healthy skin and coat in just 25 days. Feed Imes and see a visible difference. News and notes from around the league. Presented by USAA Insurance. You know, Imes, I'm, I'm going to go make a offer on HN I think <laughs> see what you did there 
Mike, you you look like you were just. I'm just cackling because to... uh, I th feel like for the news today, you got to just you got to take one of those big Ace Ventura breaths <laughs> because it's, this guy's injured. That guy's injured. Yes. This guy's injured. That guy's injured. Yeah. Um, Evans, Godwin, Ayuk, Debo Samuel, all injured. DK Metcalf, grade one MCL sprain, week to week. Jaden Daniels, very much in doubt against week for week eight. We were all excited to that see that thing's all over the place, man. No, I, look, it's not. It's it's mama. What? It's mama versus. No, it, that's all it is. Not just no, not just mama. There was reporting yesterday like he's week to week, but there's op there's optimism that he's going to be out there on Sunday, and then we're 24 hours later. And now it's very okay. much in doubt. I believe this game was flexed. This was a game that was changed a week ago because they wanted to see Caleb Williams against Jaden Daniels, and so they moved it. Into they wanted more prime Mariota. Time. Right. Yeah. So that's what they're going to get. No, I it's it would be disappointing not to see Jaden and Caleb in that yeah. matchup, but they also understand this is a long game. They they can win they can win the ball game. They can win the ball game without him. They can. Um Jameson Williams. Here we are. Oh this is big time news. Knucklehead. Following a minus four uh performance, now facing a two game suspension for violating the NFL's performance enhancing substances policy. And he has come out and said, while well, he disagrees with it, he's going to take it on the chin. So this is not, he's not, he, I, I think you got it wrong, but I'll go ahead and serve the suspension. I'm not going to kind of fight this one. Uh, don't look into it any further. So, okay, whatever that means, you know he's going to miss the next I don't two. like it, <laughs> but I'm going to serve it. Yeah. You guys are flat wrong. I'll see you in three weeks. <laughs> uh. So, I mean, hugely disappointing. Another step backwards for Jamison Williams. Part of reliability is availability, and he's not going to be on the field. We, That's, can we get two weeks of Sam Laporta, please? I think we might. I think we might. That is um, – More than two or one target. I guess they can just throw it to Gibbs. That's fine, too. Or Tim Patrick. David Montgomery's knee injury not considered serious with more okay. Lions reporting. It was uh, – <laughs> You all right, Jay? Oh, I'm just uh, – yeah, I'm good. I just want to make sure, you, you know, it's good. You want him to take a week off and get No, better? no. Better? I want him to be a full participant in the first practice possible because they have no worries. Okay. Uh, Tua Tungavailoa, we can talk about this. I mean, he's coming back from injured reserve. We have a definitive uh, answer now on the Guardian cap, N-O. He said no. He was very demonstrative and said it was a personal choice. When asked uh, specifically, I don't know if you saw the whole clip, he said, I was on the sideline last week. I watched how stupid Devon A. Chan looked, <laughs> and I was like, I can't I can't look that dumb. Um, I, at least that's what <laughs> – he didn't really say that, of course. It's just a personal choice. But uh, uh, I've, I've seen – I've got to think that factored in. Uh, you'd, you'd be surprised to learn that that press conference uh, ignited <laughs> – the Twitter sphere. Uh, so, I mean, seeing discussions on, you know, just what are the actual true benefits of the Guardian cap? What type of concussion does it prevent from or, or help prevent, I should say? So, it, I don't know. It, it is, uh, it is the, a, the zone is now flooded with crap and it's yeah, hard I to mean, get it, through it. These things are not – I'm with Tua. I'm, I, I don't really want to play the judge of that man's body and decision-making in the NFL because – you know, you can you can wear a different piece of equipment for posterity's sake, and it may not benefit you. You know, you, you do have to adjust the equipment. It's a fast-moving game. He may not feel comfortable in that helmet, and I don't know the reasoning for it, but, I mean, it is a different – it's a different feel. He's a quarterback, and that might not be the best way for him to take care of his body. You know what I mean? We, we talk about the implications of – uh, the old, you know, the people come out with the narrative of, ah, oh, if they just played in leather helmets or no helmets, there wouldn't be concussions because we take care of ourselves. There is an aspect that uh, of, of the subconscious that, what well, does he take a, a different chance because he's got a guardian cap on? I don't know the answers to that. Sure. Yeah. I'm just, I'm choosing. There is nuance. I'm choosing to side with the player's decision. And, you know, if he feels like he can play and play safely, that's his choice. Yeah, it's really up to the NFL. If the NFL thinks that, the players shouldn't have the choice and say the, the, that they were coming out and saying like, Hey, the first week back from a concussion, you have to wear a guardian cap. Well then, they, yeah, then yeah, they'd, that'd be, that'd be interesting. Then they need to institute that. Otherwise it is a player's choice. And obviously the player's not going to, you know, it, I don't think two is trying to make a bad choice for himself. He's not, you know what I mean? No, he's not. So. And he is going to mean so much 
for fantasy football. Oh, stay healthy too. Jalen Waddell, Tyreek Hill has will be reborn. Dude, I really think he should go out there in a red shirt this week and just see if they don't hit him. Just see if the defensive players are like, oh, oh they pull up a little bit, you know. Yeah. <laughs> um, my goodness. All right, Chris Olave is still in the concussion protocol. I, the most recent things I was reading is that. They hope he can be back, but it was far from certain. Yeah, we got to watch practice reports. Spencer Rattler will remain the starting quarterback if Derek Carr can't play. Which is not – he's not expected to play this week. Jonathan Taylor, the uh, head coach of the Colts, Shane Steichen, said he's optimistic he will practice. So we'll monitor – I would imagine so with such a mild ankle sprain. <laughs> we will. We will monitor that uh, Juju he... Smith-Schuster will not play. Yeah, I mean, the, this seems like a, a serious hamstring injury, so when you know it this early, I wouldn't be surprised if he misses multiple weeks. We are previewing the Thursday night football game tomorrow, but we're expecting Cooper Cup to be back, and TJ Hawkinson could be back. Okay. Could be back. Aaron Jones limited, but played really well last week. Expect him to play. Mm -hmm. Okay. Deep breath over. That was today's news and notes presented by USAA Insurance. Learn more at usaa.com slash insurance. It took us a while to get here. We'll take a quick break and come back with the waiver wire. Welcome to the waiver wire. All right, back from the bye. Caleb Williams and company, the Bears playing football, and Dallas, who, by the way, Jerry Jones, more comments this morning on the radio show. I don't know if you saw it. Oh, he I He said Derrick Henry's having a career year. I don't think he would be in our offense, uh, in the system that we run, and um, so that's one of the reasons we didn't sign him along with money. Okay. Mike, Mike any comments? Uh, Jerry, shut up. Oh, that's actually good that's advice. My, that's my final comment. It's actually good <laughs> advice because you haven't been saying a lot of things lately that have helped you out. Seriously. So like, for your own sake, because shut it. Yeah, just be, shut it. Because your family loves you. It was shut up. It was it was a little rude. So I'll say, Jerry, you don't you don't have to talk. You you can just just move on. Stop flapping your lips, old man. Yeah. All right. No bye weeks this week. <laughs> okay, that means it's a busy week, busy waivers. I just realized their shows got about 20 minutes longer on Thursday and Friday. Don't but, worry, though, because four teams will be on by in week 10. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's just not possible. I'm, like, It's not possible to even it out. I There's need, no way to do like, this. I just wanted uh, just an explanation. There's no way to like, do it. Just why? Why does it work out this way? Maybe there's a good answer. I, I mean, on the surface, it seems like there's not. I'm searching my brain for a good answer, and I can't find one. Like, I mean, a logistic reason why it needs to be this way. I just, I'm I, sure, I can't. I don't know what it is. I'm sure there is. There's so much that has to go into scheduling that's beyond what we consider, like concert tours and all sorts of things. I mean, I can't imagine putting together an actual NFL schedule. That seems, if you told me, borderline impossible. If you told me that they do the math on which weeks they need more revenue from the TV ratings or something silly, yeah, that uh, would be a defining characteristic. Yeah, like sweeps or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> NFL sweeps <laughs> week? I don't know. Oh, it's, man. It's, just, it's weird. That's a 90s right. cut. All right. I started the running back position, and you know Jalen Warren's name is going to come up there. He's only 42% yes. rostered. He's probably at the, at the near tippy top of the list if – Somebody like Alexander Madison's not available who got 23 carries. Look, it's dirty, nasty, gross in Las Vegas. Where was this last year, Alexander? He does look better this year than last year yeah. and uh, got 70% of the snaps, but he's rostered in 62% of leagues. Jason's been faithfully playing him. He's one of his stars. Oh, man. He has been one of my stars. I mean, uh, a lot of touchdowns. I don't believe he will be a star this no, week. No, no, no. Uh, against Kansas City. Kansas City has been shutting down everyone. Their defense has made for ugly victories over and over and over, but every single week of the year. Um, so I don't, you know, obviously if he's out there, you've got to pick him up. You've got a roster guy who's getting the amount of works and utilization. He was top 10 in snap rate for the running back position this week and, and 
So grab him. He's probably rostered, though, and I don't want to start him this week. You have Jalen Warren, who we talked about extensively in Difference Makers. Uh, they play the Giants, then the bye week, so that's the only trouble there. Giants, good defense. He's a bit part player. It's more of an investment in the future. Um, that's the way I'd be looking at Warren. Obviously, you could spot start him. You could also spot start a player like Tyler Algier, who's 50% rostered, who will get some chances. You're always begging for a touchdown there. Um, you know, it, it's really kind of gross to me at running back this week. Ray Davis's roster percentage is down at 29%. Buffalo Bills running back rookie. You could try to get him and and look at that as a committee. Scored last week, but only got six opportunities. Yeah, he wasn't on the field that much. When he got on the field, he still looked great. He looked just as good as the week prior. So, again, he might be earning more uh, more playing time. Right now, I'd say he's just an insurance back, a stash guy that you're picking up in case of an injury. We have proof, you know, in the pudding of it should uh, Cook go down to injury. Ray Davis looks like a really solid – he should certainly be rostered, but, again, probably not a play this week. If you want someone that you can – I don't want to spend fab this week. No, I, I think there are actually, across wide receivers and running backs, a lot of really good $0 bids. Like, these aren't guys I'm paying up for or burning my waiver priority on, but there are a ton of shots you can shoot where you can you could put out a single-dollar bid or a $0 bid if you need a start – you know, we talked about Jalen Warren, but I would throw Justice Hill in there, a very similar type of player where he's involved in the passing game. Um, you know, this is a better offense. And even though Derrick Henry is king of the castle. King of the castle. You know. He's king of the hill, too. Yeah. Oh, nice. King the, of the uh, Justice Hill. <sighs> you didn't even mean that, no, did you? I, of course I did. Okay. You, you don't just, have to just say it. You regretted it, it afterwards? No, I didn't regret I only regret it when you stated it like an explanation. Just let them have it. Um, Justice Hill, though, the problem is, is there's been three good weeks and four bad ones, and and you so you are rolling the dice on. Uh, that's what they all feel like this week outside of even Jalen Warren. And here, look, I'm going to throw this out there. Like, Cordero Patterson's back this week. So, like, there's a three-headed monster in Pittsburgh that could makes – That's uh, been reported that he is. Yeah. Well, it, no, I'm just saying it oh, could be could a three-headed three monster. Could be a three-headed monster. We don't – we haven't seen what the, the Arthur Smith Steelers actually looks like when all three of them – are really ready to go. Uh, the name I will throw out here at the – because, yeah, the running backs are mostly just like – just pad, you know, pick up your insurance running backs at this point. We don't know what the status of Travis Etienne is. And Tank Bigsby is their primary guy when they're winning. But the Jaguars are playing Green Bay this week. I think that Dearness Johnson is going to be on the field mm. a ton – uh, he had nine carries and four targets this past week, and if like if you were watching the game at the beginning when the they were down ten nothing, were down 10 nothing Tank Bigsby was doing nothing. So uh, that's it's nasty, but in, in that's a fifty point over under in that game, and, and I'm guessing Green Bay is probably favored by forty two. <laughs> yeah, it's it's wild. Uh, I'm gonna guess eight. I don't know, but is it just, in Jacksonville? It is. Yes. Then I'll say five or six. So that is, if you are really struggling, four and a half. I think that there there's a chance that he is that Dearness is on the field a lot this week. With the lack of sexy in these names, are you going to let a Braylon Allen go or a Devin no, Singletary no, go? No, I'm not letting Braylon go. Th these are the guys you need to pick up right now. Blake Corum doing nothing while Kyron is out there ninety percent of snaps and owning everything. But listen to the the other part of that. Kyron's out there ninety percent of snaps. He, he's going to snap. He could snap. He snapped in the past. Oh, so, no. Um, these type of insurance backs are those cheap bids that people – people aren't going hard after insurance backs right now, but they need to be rostered so that next week when the waiver wire comes after injury and you go, everyone's got to spend all your flab on – Your what? <laughs> your what? Just dump your flab off hey. your body. We got to shed these LBs. I didn't even know that was an option. I can spend it. You can spend your flab, fab or flab, to pick up these yeah. players. But when when we're when Jason's we're saying next week more than on Blake Corum or Braylon Allen that you've got to um, lose all the weight on them, <laughs> you'll already have them on your roster. And you know if you have a, a struggle <laughs> in losing weight, now you don't just, have Al to. Al just said he's getting every player. <laughs> <laughs> I've got so much more flab than you guys. <laughs> Hey, speak for yourself, man. I, I got, I, I still got. You're plenty. working on your flag. I'm just, working on it, know. but got a lot left to love. <laughs>
Um, so you guys will get the players. Look, uh, if we turn the page to wide receivers, I want to know not whether or not you pick up Juwan Jennings and Ricky Pearsall. Those are going to be tippy top of the list pickups. It's more how much do you invest and what are you willing to lose to do it? Are you, are we at the point now where, yes, we love Josh Downs, but no, he's not going to have a quarterback the rest of the year. So we're going to go trade him in and get a Ricky Pearsall or a Juwan Jennings. I, I would punt Josh Downs off a bridge if I needed to have someone I could start. If if this is an opportunity, like if I need to start him, putting Josh Downs on your roster to me is like putting Blake Corum on your roster. He could be great if if his quarterback goes yeah, down. Is that dropping the flab is like when you let a guy go off it's, of the team? Oh, um, yeah, you're trimming. You're yeah. trimming the flab? Trimming the fat. And spinning the fab. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I think guys like that you can let go. Jawan Jennings and Ricky Pearsall, you're going to burn your waiver priority. You're yes. going to spend a good amount of fab. The question I, I is, I want to know what that is and how if they're the same amount or what. I am personally less bullish than most. Um, I'm not sure Jawan Jennings plays, and it's if possible. He, if he doesn't play this week, they have a bye week next week. So there is a good. There's an advantage to maybe sitting him. There, there, right, and so. I guess I don't want to burn my priority or jump, dump 25-35 fab on a player that maybe will be good three weeks from now if I can't play him this week. Now, you might drop 25 yeah. and play him this week and have a star. I, I don't know, but that's where I would rather I would rather put Pearsall in my priority because I don't know that he's going to be as good as Juwan Jennings, but I know he's playing football. Yeah, I think that's a team construction differential. Yeah, because I'd still, even if I would spend it on Juwan. If Juwan doesn't play for three weeks, I don't care. I yeah. think that I think he's going to. If you could pick up, be so good. Think about how bad Brandon Ayuk has been, and if yeah. Brandon Ayuk was on the waiver wire and healthy, like Juwan Jennings was actually productive. I would spend a lot if I if I had the the capacity to withstand the next yes. couple of weeks, and he could play, like you said. Yeah, I would go after that. Um, there are three names that are really highly rostered that are on our waiver list. By the way, join the foot.com, get access to the ultimate dashboard, and get a custom waiver wire list specific to each of your leagues. Like the ultimate dashboard lets you import your leagues and your rosters, as many as you got, and you can go through each one and not only get your lineup optimized, but get spot starts from the waiver wire and a custom waiver list specific to who's available in your league. So, so much of what we talk about in the show is just like kind of bringing up why a player might be valuable. There's so much interleague context that you need to have. And two notes on that. One, the spot starts stu stu <laughs> What I mean, is <laughs> I just I got a lot of body on the mind. I guess. So I'm, I'm trying to remove Wait. flab and and healthy BMs here, but that tool is so valuable later in the week. When you're when you're sitting there Saturday and you're not sure if you made the right waiver pickup, the, the spot start is awesome. You just go through your leagues and say, man, this guy could outscore someone in, in my lineup. But the other part is we do an hour, hour and 10 minutes trying to give you as much information as we can. We do not cover all the players in our waiver pickups. Like The tool online has far more players than the than the players we're mentioning here, and they'll be specific to your League, so check check that out uh, at jointhefoot.com. So the three higher rostered are Jerry Judy, Khalil Shakir, and Romeo Dobbs. Dobbs was eight for ninety four this past week, so two good weeks since he's returned from his hissy fit. Cedric Tillman, eight for eighty one on twelve targets. Seems like a concerted effort to develop Cedric Tillman in this offense. Uh, I I mentioned in the office I this was is Cleveland by the way. Yeah, the Cleveland Browns. He's a second year player, and after the Amari Cooper trade and breaking everything down, I was like, I regret not at least mentioning Cedric Tillman because it's like is Jerry Judy good at the at looking at the career of Jerry Judy is he a a really good player and I think he's just he's fine like I've seen enough Jerry Judy to say he can get things done every once in a while I don't where, blame you though because Cedric Tillman had five oh, he targets was, on the year he was atrocious his rookie year no but, I mean this year Oh, what, this year he had five yeah. targets in We're, six weeks, so I don't blame you for not bringing him up because we all expected it to be Elijah Moore, David Njoku, Jerry Judy, and also Gross. Yes. So he, now it's all changing. Yes, and it, it's – but he was a third-round pick. His rookie year was uh, – I mean, like if you're looking at peripherals, was disastrous. But Cedric Tillman, over the off season, heading into the season, he was one of the names from the Cleveland Browns training camp that was like, 
Year two for Cedric Tillman is looking a lot better. Now, obviously, that that didn't happen right away, but Amari Cooper leaving, they're – like Jerry Judy doesn't play the same type of – he's not the same archetype of wide receiver as Amari Cooper where Tillman's an outside wide receiver. Do you remember the bar that you could ride ice skates yes. over? Yeah, yeah, the uh, Josh character. The Josh's yeah, character yeah, bar. Yeah, Papa Josh. Like his his yeah, actual, yeah. like, fundamental personality. Right. Um that's kind of the same kind of bar that Jerry Judy and Elijah Moore have set sure. on the ground for Cedric Tillman. So, uh, look, if it's Winston, I'm more excited about that pickup. I would agree. But he's available in 100% of leagues. But 12 targets this past week. Eight Don't for ignore 80, the targets. Eight for 81. Meanwhile, like, Jerry Judy was at five targets. So it's – this is low probability stuff, but he is a second-year wide receiver. He was a day-two pick. Uh, out of uh, Tennessee, like I liked Tillman. I thought that he was a very interesting outside wide receiver, knowing it could take some time for him to to actually develop in the NFL. But the opportunity in front of him is it. This is a major a, a major break for him of trading the trading Amari Cooper away and having the potential of Jameis Winston, which we don't have. We gotten any more news? on what, have, what the Browns are planning to do no, with quarterback. I, I haven't seen, I haven't anything. seen anything. I, I, I would imagine that they're going to do the NFL coaching thing, and we're not going to know until late in the week. Hopefully we know like Friday they announce a starter, but uh, you know maybe earlier, I, I doubt it. I, I have a really difficult time with Cedric Tillman when you've been as bad as he's been. Like, like, I get it. I, I know he's only in his second year, um, which honestly surprised me. He was so bad, I thought he was drafted like 20 years ago. Um, it's difficult, but 12 targets... 82% of snaps, and he goes into a role that it was vacated. I, I get it. you got to pay attention to that. What, what was your reaction to Keon Coleman's 4 for 125 this past week? Because I think a lot of people would expect us to have brought his name up first. He's a rookie. We know rookies take time to develop. Amari Cooper, you know, none of Coleman's targets came directly because Amari Cooper was on the football field, but you can see that being a good outcome potentially for him the way that T. Higgins and Jamar Chase benefit one another. He's not a big passing pie, but an efficient one. That's he, he, Coleman's difficult. I, he's worth adding. I one hundred percent. It's just the the level of how aggressive would you go after him? Where I mean, they would you rather have him or Dontavian Wicks? Um, on your on your team because uh, both wow. are pretty available. I think I'd go. I think I'd go Wicks. I I like Coleman there. But it's, Jason? it's not man. I was really hoping you didn't ask me. Yeah, sorry. It's not. It's it's not a huge. If difference. you were wearing a black shirt today, I would not have asked you. But yeah. because you're wearing a slightly forest green olive hue, I will ask you. I I'm gonna go Coleman. Um, like a Packers shirt. Yeah, I'm gonna go Coleman simply because this is a highly drafted rookie. He is a you know the the opportunities are gonna be forced his direction a little bit more than Wicks. Wicks this last game, like I would take Dobbs over either of them. Um, obviously he's more rostered. But Dobbs is on the field. His targets are a little bit more assured. When you when you look at Wicks and Christian Watson, they're basically playing the same role, and yes. they're kind of splitting the snaps while Reed and uh, Dobbs are just on the field. So I, I lean I would take Coleman there. I want to bring up uh, – we talked about the 49er wide receivers. There's been some rumors this morning about the zero-target Cortland Sutton to San Francisco. We already know that there was some rumors about Cortland Sutton going to the 49ers – during the Ayuk saga, because there was some three-way trade discussions about Ayuk leaving, Sutton being the piece coming over to San Francisco, the do it the uh, Denver that's, Broncos. That's Troy Franklin that's related. Troy Franklin. The Denver Broncos dude. are clearly oh committed to Franklin and Vele and and Mims and the young crowd. So I say all that to say, keep that in mind with the 49er receivers you pick up. And keep that in mind when you look at the development of a young player like Troy Franklin and Vele in Denver, who, again, they're going to have to depend on a rookie quarterback who has been hit and miss. But this past week, Troy Franklin was 5 for 50 on 51% of snaps. Okay. He, he's I moving mean, that's up. that's fine. If you, if you look at the last two weeks. I don't want to make too much of it. No, but if you look at the last two weeks, there's been a, a, a shift. You still have Cortland Sutton as the clear snap leader at, in, in the wide receivers. Um, he is their one, despite having no targets last week. He's the one, no matter what, unless he gets traded. In which case, the oh man, the the pants are <laughs> they will explode, evaporating. Um, you want him to take some of the zero targets from Sutton? 
this but next week? I want him to take the snaps because I think he can earn targets. You, you've you got him right now over the last two weeks. He is leading in targets. He's leading in receptions. He's second behind Vele in uh, total yards. Obviously, he had a touchdown made and a touchdown dropped in the last two weeks. So why isn't Vele on this list? Vele should absolutely be on this list. This is a Denver Broncos team with Bo Nix that is getting the youth more involved. Their offense looks like they're they're clicking a little bit more. They're certainly not even middle of the pack or high powered offense yet. But this is the path of a rookie. And, you know, we talk about this with rookie wide receivers, despite the fact that you see someone like Malik Neighbors come out and dominate, and even Brian Thomas Jr., most rookie wide receivers are better in the second half of the year than the first half of the year. And so if the opportunities come around for both those players, I think they can be rostered and played. There's so many wide receivers. But Jalen McMillan, that's Rashad the, Bateman. Yes. That's that's why I'm saying this week is like I want to take zero dollar bids on a. I like I like Troy Franklin. I'm going to put a zero dollar bid on him. If I don't get him, fine. It, it, there's there's a handful. Demario Douglas. Um, he he had a down week, but Drake May looked great, and the down week was because he had an he illness. Sick, yeah. Yeah, and Bateman, uh, four catches in three straight games, big play capability. Bob Means would get a start for the. New Orleans Saints, who signed MVS, so don't care about that. But Bob Means would get a start if Olave was still out. And Jalen McMillan, not rostered. Opportunity with a with Baker, who's playing great football. And I don't want to underest. I don't want to just condemn the Buccaneers, who are a pretty good football team, to you know to not being competent. Like there's a world where Evans comes back in a few weeks, and, and McMillan's contributing, and Otten and Rashad White. And they're okay on offense. And it's an important game. They're going to be at home against the Falcons for the division lead. Whoever wins that game will be in the lead. So you, I think $0 bids Jeez. personally on McMillan and Sterling Shepard. If you want to put a little bit more fab on McMillan, that that makes sense because I think he will. Yeah, he's he's far ahead of Shepard to me. Yeah, that that's fine. And, and he will go for more. Like Shepard will go probably through your waivers without getting picked up. Uh, McMillan will be one of the heavier bid prices. The the drop candidate names are wild, guys, but it's Juju, who could miss multiple weeks. I'm it's fine Christian with that. Watson, who is irrelevant. I mean, if you're talking about Wicks and Dobbs, and then you've got Reed and Kraft, and Watson's not part of that, that's a tough one. You might have invested Fab last week on Christian Watson. Yeah, I don't think I, I would be fine dropping Juju Smith Schuster. I would be fine dropping Josh Downs without Flacco. Um Tank Dell and Marvin Harrison's names these are, were ah! submitted were submitted to us. They are a lot of people are asking about those, and those are supremely easy don't drops for me. I mean the the list of of people we're talking about today, you know, how much fab are you gonna spend on these players? If those guys were out there, I would I would go all in. I mean the Marvin Harrison has been struggling but he is still a very talented rookie wide receiver who should be the one for his team. Tank Dell has been struggling. His targets were there. The red zone uh, was there. The matchup this week is there. The uh, hard one with Dell is like, like the targets, like him and Ridley are identical in fantasy production per game, and Ridley has 17 targets and three catches in the last two weeks. Dell hasn't made the most of his. Both of those players, where do they fit into the, the mold then, Mike? Of all these different names, are you adding Juwan Jennings and dropping those two players? Uh, Juwan, I would. Uh, for the for for not Marv, not Marv. Uh, I mean that that one's outrageous. Tank Dell or Juwan, I think is that one's really really hard because you got to manufacture wins right now. I think long long term, I would rather have Juwan Jennings, but this week. Yes, I'm. You might need Tank Dell, and he. Jason's right. He, Jake, Tank Dell, process wise, is in a very good spot this week. at home against Indy, right? I believe so. So it's that that is a really difficult team construction question. Uh, do you have any comments on Calvin Ridley if he's sitting on a waiver wire? Because um, he's been dropped by a lot of people. I would not be aggressively adding him at tight end. To me, Kate Otten. And Hunter Henry topped the list. Yes. Both of them are going to be like Hunter Henry has an opportunity with Drake May and the yardage he's putting up to be an every week player. Kate Otten, in the absence of those star wide receivers, I don't know how he survived the Dude. game. Kate Otten took so many hits at such high rate of speed that 
Like if I was like, like if I had to choose who needs a guardian cap more than Tua, it would be Kate Otten. Yeah, and, because it was Scott Sterling. It was always to the head, man. It was over and over and rapidly. Like these were not like one in the first quarter, and then you get to the fourth. It was like it, it felt like they were moments apart. Four plays in a row, and then and then the the it was like the fourth play. He's running down the sideline. Guy comes out with a baseball bat right to the. <laughs> Right to the helmet. It was it was flag. They didn't call. They, oh, they did. Yeah, call they, they it. Okay. Called. They they have a rule against no baseball bets. But that's what it, it just it was felt a, like they were it was a fan or a targeting player targeting his. It was a player. Wow. Yeah, player coach. Gotcha. <laughs> um, what? do you buy into the one week wonder of Johnny Smith now that two is back? No, I think Johnny Smith, who had a crazy like thirty plus percent target share, seven I, for ninety six and a touchdown. I. I I will say that Jonu Smith is not a bad player, is involved in the offense, and um, I don't think just evaporates, but he's not going to be the number one target in this offense with Tua. Would you spend up on uh, Kate Otten? I think I would if you're in like, need. Dude. Like how much fab? Otten, ten, and, ten, Otten and Henry, I would go. Yeah, I would say 10 I'd be aggressive, fab. As, assuming I don't have a solution at the tight end position. And the, I'll just, real quick for Would you Johnny, move on from Dalton Kincaid to, to one of Dolan? those players? Not, uh, not yet. I want to see Amari Cooper. Sam Laporta to one of those players? No. No. Not while Jamison's out. But um, for, for Janu, the he's had seven targets, in, seven or more targets in three games this year. I know that it, everything's wonky for Miami, but during the bye week. He had a good two a game. During the bye week, the coaching staff was, I mean, I, I believe Coach Speak uh, on Twitter was had put it out that, like, they're talking about Janu, and then – to be talking about it, and then he's gets seven targets. the The production was like that's the icing. It was just will the opportunity actually show up, and it did. So he's on the radar. You will get tight end screens to Johnny Smith, and whether he does something with him will change whether your week is good. Here's one of the cool perks of Johnny. I will add this in there: every single time you throw him the football, you didn't throw it to Odell Beckham. Oh, that is, yeah. Oh, to be fair, Odell Beckham is not really playing football anymore. Like, I've watched. He is not playing football. Defense is your uh, keyed in on this week. I, I picked up Detroit in a few leagues last week, knowing they played Tennessee and the Levis-Rudolph-Wolf-Fest. Detroit's 10.5-point favorites. Tennessee will be putrid. Baltimore plays Cleveland. Dear goodness. Cleveland hasn't scored 20 all year. Yeah, that's a, that's a strong play. I'm I'm perfectly fine with the Chargers against Spe Spencer Rat Tail as he's called. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> I'm just reading Rat Tail. I'm sharing Kyle's jokes. Uh, I don't, and I'm sure he's behind a video camera laughing hysterically snake, right now. Man. Um, to to add on to your Chargers, not only do they play Spencer Rat Tail this week, but, oh. the, but then they play the Cleveland Browns the next week. That's great. And and then they play the Tennessee Titans. So you've got you're really looking when you when you're. You're either looking at one of You're chasing the rat tail? You're chasing the quarterback opponent. That's what I mean, you're, you're going to get Derek Carr back. You want touchdowns, you want sacks, and turnovers. Are you talking about the Chargers? Yeah, oh, I got the Chargers you. defense. New Orleans, Cleveland, Tennessee. Exactly. Not who Spencer Rattler no, 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 is no. playing. Um, Houston plays Indy and Anthony Richardson, who is both mistake-prone and inept at scoring points. I know he had a good game against him earlier in the year. It was on the back of two bombs. Can he sustain drives, or do the Houston Texans give up big bomb plays? I don't know. Um, and Green Bay, uh, they're on the road, so don't necessarily love that. But Green Bay's defense is – they're like it's an actually good defense, and Jacksonville, I think, will struggle. All right, let's talk quarterbacks. Full stream ahead. Well, this is fun. We're talking streaming quarterback options, and uh, for the first time ever, I'm going to bring Patrick Mahomes' name up. <laughs> Wow, this is this is literally the first and only time he has ever been allowed to be a streaming. Oh, he is very much a. This is a. This is not a confident stream. I this don't. Is, I wouldn't. I wouldn't play see, him. This is a, this is a this is a maybe stream. He. This is a history stream. Like he's a three hundred and two guy. Actually, three hundred and two and a half against the Raiders. Historically, he dominates them, and he's never been mentioned in this segment before. But he just kills the Raiders. Um, you know, this is just you're, – you're not saying 403. You're saying 202. That is the streaming standard of our show. I think he can put up 200 yards and two touchdowns against 
the Raiders. That's all I'm saying. Well, that will be a feat he has, let me see, done in week one. So that's cool. Um, anyways, uh, I'm going to go with Kirk Cousins. He had a down week this last uh, week at home. Was it two straight down weeks after we chased the 500? I believe so, yeah. yeah. I just two, feel like he's been on this ago, segment for a while. Two weeks yeah. ago was a little bit mediocre. 23rd. Last, last week was uh, – Even worse. Yeah, was was worse. But if you remember the week prior to that, who was his opponent when he put up the 509 yards and four touchdowns? It was the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I looked up the weather just because whenever it's a game in Tampa or certain locations, I want to make sure – that's not an issue. Looks like a nice 81 degrees and in the in overcast, so my, we're fine. My concern would be I have the that, same concern. that Tampa Bay team was able to put up 30 points. Can, have, can this Tampa Bay team put up that many points? I don't know. And I think, I, Kyle, correct me if I'm wrong, last year when these two teams played, we had the shootout in Atlanta, and then when they matched up in Tampa Bay, I mean, that which shouldn't have an effect, but – that's what happened last year. So yeah, that, that would be – that's my only question. Yeah, for obviously, this was in before losing both right, yeah, Mike yeah, Evans yeah. and Chris Godwin. Yeah. It, it certainly does hurt the ceiling. I think that he yeah, – 16-13 in Tampa last year. Right. Obviously, different quarterbacks and different yeah, teams. Yeah, of course. But, yeah. Uh, I'm I'm going with the rookie. I'm taking Bo Nix. Bo Nix. Bo Nix. The Broncos rookie. He is playing the Carolina Panthers. Hold on to your butts, everybody, because the Broncos team implied total this week is almost 26 points. Well, look at there. Look at the Broncos. Look man. at the little guys getting eight, there. Short fields. Eight-point home great favorites defense. against the Carolina Panthers. And Bo Nix is, Bo Nix is a dual-threat quarterback right now. He's averaging 36. Last two weeks, we've got 10 for 75, 6 for 61. Like So he is he's not – unwilling to do that and that is a that's a huge boost especially when you're looking at a streamer a streamer at home stream at home with with a huge point total against a bad team so I, he's in play over the course of this season so this isn't like oh the last two weeks when he's had big runs or whatever this is the the seven games played he's on pace for 619 rushing yards that is that is a very dual threat quarterback and that's I don't think how I think people really need to adjust hey, their you want to hear something yeah i do who's got who's got more fantasy points bo nix starting quarterback of the denver broncos or back-to-back -back super bowl yeah, champion I mean, patrick mahomes that's an easy one a lot of people have more <laughs> fantasy points than patrick mahomes marcus Mariota, i believe just had a three-quarter performance that was more fantasy points than Patrick Mahomes has had in a, in a game the Mariota game was wild because he uh, was sixth on the week he 18 for 23, 205 and 2. Wait, hey, who, who has more fantasy points? <laughs> Patrick Mahomes or Daniel Jones, who has not thrown a passing touchdown at home in forever? In forever. I mean, I guess Daniel Jones. That is, that is correct. Yeah, that's fun. But Mariota looked Mariota looked so inept to start that game. He had a he But, but he got game. it Oh, he got it together. Uh, somehow Kyler Murray's a drop candidate on here. Kyler Murray no. um you know, I know it, it wasn't pretty at all times yesterday. He, he was still a top-ten quarterback this week. We did get a number of players that um, on Monday kind of lifted the bar for the the quarterback. The top two quarterbacks of the week were Lamar and Baker I, in the game. I do want to throw out a name. You know, this is waivers. This is not a streaming candidate for this week. Plays on the road against San Francisco. But Dak Prescott's been bad. He has, he has not been lighting up the box scores. He's – coming off a bye and on the road in San Francisco. He's going to be on waivers. He's going to be dropped on waivers this week. The rest of season after that. Yeah, you should do that, Jay, so he's on our waivers. So what you said was no, true. No, 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 no. So what I you picked, said was true. I picked him up already for the stretch run. Atlanta, Philly, Houston, Washington, the Giants, Cincinnati Bengals. Then you get to the playoffs, Carolina, Tampa Bay, Philly. Like the It's it's just like last year. It is a, a golden goose of passing opponents on the second half of the season. Yeah, I um, I'll be very curious to see. I, you know, I'd love to see the repeat for the sake of C.D. Lamb and Jake Ferguson and the offense. But I also feel like hanging in the balance slightly more this year is the collapse of the Cowboys, because their defense has been so bad, and because Jerry Jones is hanging over this team like a crypt, keeping what what what's one of those creatures in Harry Potter the the dementors? Sucks the, yeah, he's like yeah. a kind of a dementor owner. Yeah, I get that. You know what I mean, like. Yeah, he's hovering around the hallways, and if you get too close, Ooh. he will take your soul. Jerry Jones, uh, just recently, 
quote, the, the type of things that we all think we should be looking at is we're designing bad plays or we're designing bad concepts. Okay. But that's the, the whole thing? That, uh, the, the Like this is – Jerry Jones is – He's on a heater. Yeah, every <laughs> everybody is under this bus. Now he is. You know who's done a great know, job though? Jerry Jones. <laughs> I'm I'm pretty sure <laughs> he's just done a. No one could do a better job than Jerry Jones has done. What <laughs> age do you think your cognitive and general manager abilities peak? Do you believe it is a thirty years old, b forty years old, okay. or c eighty two years old? B. Ooh. If I had to go with those three numbers, I would put the cap at 40 then. So you're saying it's not C, 82 years old? I think that that is not in the best interest of... He did just celebrate his 82nd birthday. Happy birthday, Jerry. You're doing a great job. Make the most of this one. All right, that is it for today's <laughs> podcast. Um, hope you enjoyed it. We're back tomorrow. Hungry for more. TNF preview. Second half sleepers episode. Talk to you then. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.